Doctor Strange, Surgeon Supreme, Issue 1, sees Stephen tell one of his patients his brain cancer is one of the deadliest a person can have, hence why the patient was referred to him. The patient wonders if he's going to be put through chemo, but Stephen says that he isn't a radiologist, he's a surgeon. The patient thinks he's wasting time and was told no surgeon can remove the tumour, but Stephen Strange knows he can. Leaving the room, Stephen knows New York's McCarthy Medical Institute is filled to the point of overcrowding, and as a master of the mystic arts, he sees the spectral echoes of the recently dead, as well as a sickness and disease that falls over the hospital. He knows his heart would shatter if he worked there full time, and he gets to work, helping the man with his tumour and using his newly prepared hands and renewed medical skill to destroy it. On top of returning to work as a surgeon, he continues his life as the Sorcerer Supreme, keeping a balance. However, 30-hour days begin taking a toll on him, draining him despite the exhilaration he feels from surgery. As he sleeps in his cloak of levitation, he remembers remembers learning his magical abilities and the demon that brought back his hands, but he puts the thought of the price he will need to pay for the hands into the back of his head as he knows people need his help. That afternoon, Stephen deals with the hospital bureaucracy with his new assistant Kermit, who is allowed to ask Stephen one superhero question a day. Stephen meets with Administrator Hagen, who isn't too happy with the state of his office, especially since he's only been there two weeks. Using magic to give her a seat, the woman says that Dr. Bellamy says that Stephen isn't following procedures. Stephen knows that Bellamy has always had it out for him as he offers Hagen a tissue. She wonders why as she sneezes, learning that she has a cold coming on. As she wipes her nose, Hagen says there is one more thing. A new dean is starting at the hospital and she wonders if Stephen is going to like him as a boss. Stephen wonders why that is and learns that the dean is Anthony Ludgate. However, Stephen is surprised since Anthony is dead. Suddenly, a code blue alarm rings out, so Stephen races to the ER, learning the ER is is beginning to be flooded with people from buildings collapsing in Hudson Yard. He learns that most of the people are still there and getting killed before they can be rescued, so donning his cape and costume, Stephen takes off for the yards, helping the firefighters in the rescue. He finds bodies in the rubble, learning that they weren't killed by the debris, but by something magical. Stephen soon hears a little girl nearby, going to help her as she calls for her father, who lies next to her and was flayed alive. Stephen makes the little girl sleep, giving her to the firefighters and telling them to rush her to the trauma ward. Suddenly, he is attacked by the Wrecker, who has an enchanted weapon. Strange doesn't think he's a threat, binding him with the bands of Sidorak, but Wrecker uses his weapon to smash himself out of them. He attacks, saying he traded up and no one is controlling him this time and he doesn't even need his crew. Wrecker binds Steven with his magic, smashing him in the shoulder and breaking Strange's arm. He tells the hero to get up as he attacks again and again until Steven is knocked out. Picking the hero up, he puts him on some rubble, tying him to it, telling him that his boss owes him half a million for destroying these buildings, but killing Strange is value added on. He wants Strange to suffer, so he kicks the tied Steven into the river, wondering what the word is for making a magician disappear is, remembering it's abracadabra. Doctor Strange, Surgeon Supreme Issue 1 was a great new beginning to the character as he returns to a life of medical practice. I love the idea of Steven having to balance being a surgeon and the Sorcerer Supreme and just the toll that takes on him, yet he still perseveres with it for the good of the people, but also how similar those jobs are and how he kind of feeds one into the other and uses them both to benefit the other. His fight with the Wrecker was brutal and a great mystery has been put forth, so I'm really looking forward to finding out who is giving out enchanted weapons to these low-level villains. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10.